next tutorial of A2019 and as you saw from the video earlier, what we are going to see will be something that is uh, like reading the Excel configuration file uh, using A2019. So without further ado, let me show you. So like you saw, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to create uh, a configuration file for ourselves, like, just like the previous time. Let me name it as name, then value, and then description. Okay. So what you can do here is you can, uh, if you want, I will just format it to something for now. Okay. And I will just give some values. So let me give some values like timeout s. Okay. There might be a URL. There might be a value, let's say, as a delay s. Okay. There might be something like an image threshold. Okay. And uh, apart from that, we can also give like a file path, let's say. Okay. Like a more, more like I would say it as an input file path. Okay. And we can give some arbitrary values. So for timeout, let me give something like a five, what, how, like 1000 S, 1000, so it's in seconds. We can give something like a URL here. Okay. We can give again some kind of a threshold, let's say 2000. Uh, we can give something like 0 0.9. Okay, so the, uh, and I can give an input file path. Let's say C uh, bot folder. Okay, so let's say this is how my value looks like. Uh, one more thing that I can do, I can give some descriptive the uh, description like this is something like this is the timeout value in seconds. Okay. Similarly, I can just simply copy this and just paste it here and I can just write it as a delay. What I can do is I can give it this one as a delay. I can give it like, let's say something like this is the input file path. This is the threshold. I can say ranging from ranging from 0 to 0 0.1 something like that okay and at the end so yeah and i can say this is the application url okay so once we have done this what i can do is i can just format these with some different color and at the very end I can just border them if I want. Okay, so this is so what I want to show you is this is typically how your configuration file looks like. Okay, so now I what I want to do is as you saw in the video, we are going to create a dictionary where column A would be, I would say it would be the uh, particular name, key of that dictionary, column B would be the value of that dictionary. Now, the thing here that you want to note down is, I would say is, okay, I just miss one key. So, okay, so the thing that you want to note down is a very simple thing. Whenever I'm doing this kind of an operation over a dictionary, I have to iterate through a loop and that is pretty evident. Now, to iterate it, there are two ways that I'm going to show you. One of the way I will be using and the second way I will just discuss. I don't preferably use it, but you can use it if you want. So what we can do is, either we can just go like cell by cell like i go to this cell i take the value then i go down take and then i take this cell to the key to the value then go down then go to left once i will make it as key i can make it as value now this approach i usually don't prefer in previous in automation anywhere in version 11 if you guys have used excel operations this was the only way uh, where we can traverse through an excel cell if we an other way was just to use a and of a OLEDB connection to maybe use a particular Excel file as a database. So I have, so we are not going to go by the database approach because it will require to connect, uh, creating a connection string. We can also do that, but I would say, um, I don't think like we need to do that right now. I don't okay, so advise anyone to use the Excel traversing feature because 
uh, uh, remember this is just a key tip to all you guys who want to come into automation this is what i follow always uh, there is one golden rule in automation that i think is like always minimize the external dependencies as much as you can so since excel application is an external dependency for me uh, because it's an external application right if if your file gets too large and if it, your system is very slow this kind of an approach might you know would not be a feasible one so i always prefer an approach to take everything into a data table and then traverse through it and that is what we are going to do okay so enough with the description let me now just show you what i'm going to do i'll be for saving this file and here what i can do is i can just name it something like a uh, let's say config dot xlsx okay so yeah it will be like config dot xlsx okay so there's no issues here okay so i have saved this file with me okay and i will just try to change this name of the sheet to configuration okay that's the only change i'm going to make and rest is okay okay so now what we will do is i will go to my control room as you can see this is the control room that i have so i have one task already created so you guys can parallelly work with me so what we will do is first uh let's create a variable to store the excel session okay so i always prefer to variableize anything that i get so i can name it as s excel session i can just simply create it and then what i will do is i will use a variable operation very at the very beginning and in this assign activity i will be using a string and i will be just giving a value to this excel session let me give it something like a excel session okay and now what i can do is i can go to open so in excel advanced i will be using excel advanced because i want to get everything into a data table so that this feature in excel advanced would be a preferable or suitable one to give me that so what i can do is i can simply give this session name and here i have to give a text of file so again this is uh, as a best practice again you guys should be uh, variableizing it but okay for now we can take it as a, a parameter like a hard coded one so no issues here for now so what i will be go doing is i will be navigating to c if you remember bot folder config.xlsx okay so i once i have my parameter here i will be going here i can name it something like a configuration okay and then what i can do is i can say that this sheet contains a header so that is what i'm saying okay and similarly i will use a close command very subsequent to it so now one thing you can do here is you can simply first copy this now what i can do i can take the close because sessions names uh, do not get copied automatically in version 11 it used to happen here you have to always define it okay that is one thing so once i do that i will now be doing one more thing i will use a read so in excel advanced uh, i think it's not read i will just write something like a data table okay so in excel advanced i have one get worksheet as a data table yeah so i'll be using get worksheet as a data table i will be using excel session and here also i can just write something like this again use variables for whatever things i'm hard coding that would be the best thing you can do and now i need to assign it to a value this will be obviously a table variable that i need to create so let me create something like a t config values okay so i have a t config values which is a table so till this part everything comes under my data table like when i open the excel file i take everything like whatever is there inside that data table now what uh, i can do is i now have to loop through that data table right so let me use a loop functionality and here in the loop i can just write something like a for each row in table give the table name assign a record value so this will be the current record for each iteration so i can write it as as current record now let me just create it 
so once i create this value okay now what i can do is i can i will now have to assign everything to a dictionary so so for that let me first create a dictionary so i will be creating something like a d config values okay and let me name it as a dictionary and let the string it be of string type so i have my configuration values dictionary also like i told you if you want if it is a, a subtask that you are calling you can make it as an output so that it goes as an output parameter uh, now in this loop what i will be doing is i have to now assign each and every value to my what i can do i can use a put command so if i use a put command here i have used a put in the put i need to first give the dictionary value so this is config values now i have to associate a key to it so as you know my key in this case would be uh, the record in the record it would be the first column column a the name of the column i will be using as name you can even use index as zero so the best practice is to use name because let's say tomorrow your columns get reshuffled you again have to make changes to your code uh, like it can't be it won't be zero you might have to change it to some other uh, location like one two so best better thing is you use the name directly so now i've used it the new value i have to assign okay so uh, so what i will do is now the new value will again be the record in the record again there will be something i need to do now first what i need to do is i first need to extract that value out of record so what i can do i can simply create one more va variable called as s value the reason being is here i won't be able to you know give anything inside current record so that's why i am going to create one more variable called as s value and here i can do one assign activity i can use one assign activity in the assign activity i can use a string assign because i have to take a strings value so remember why we are using string because the subtype of the dictionary is string only and also in that record that we are taking we are also expecting it to be a string okay so now here what i am going to do is i am going to give it an s value the destination would be s value the source would be if i go here current record i have to take the second column you can put index as one or the name as value and once i do this so this will be going inside value and here i can simply assign value and the second thing uh, that i can do here is i have to now uh, like assign the previous value to a variable now this is of no use to me because i am in the current iteration i don't want anything to be done with the previous value so i can just make it as a prompt assignment since it's a mandatory value and once i give it you have this with you so this is one way where you can use it okay so now as you can see i have both uh, this uh, I, now i am having a loop in which everything is going inside my dictionary at run time okay so this is the logic that i created now i have to test this logic so what i can do is i can use again let's say a kind of a loop command also or i can you, you if you remember we had two techniques either i can check the size or i can use a loop command to see the value directly let me try to see the value directly so i would say for each key in dictionary give the value to s config values give the current value to s key and while i'm doing it what i can do i can try to use a message box in the message box now what i can do is i can do two uh, things okay. let me first give the key here s key so this is the key that i have i'm giving a hyphen and an arrow to indicate this is what this side is the key now this side i have to give the value so what i can do i can use dconfig values in the key itself what i can give is i can give this key itself s key okay and once i give it i can just insert it okay so i have to give it like this okay so now it will just simply take the value so i have removed the double quotes okay and now let me try to run this and see what what happens okay
So now it has read it and now it is trying to loop. Now if you see the value of timeout was thousand, it is getting it is coming here. This one is also coming here. This one is also coming here. So we have all the timeout values with us also. Okay. So this is how I ran this word here and you saw uh, what happened, right? Okay, guys. So like you saw, this is how we can fetch any values from, a, from an Excel file in which uh, there are configuration values and put it inside a dictionary variable. So this is the most common way in which even organizations use their like the configuration files. They uh, use either an Excel file or if in uh, more advanced cases, they also use a SQL database. So in my upcoming videos, I will be showing you uh, how we can do the same using a SQL database and how most secure uh, storage of config file will be possible in that.